Gavetheon. We are now just 62 <coughs> days away from the Welsh general election. A once in a five year opportunity to renew our democracy, to reappraise our priorities as a nation and elect a new government. To give a new mandate for that, for that government to confront the challenges that we all face. Too often in politics, people are told there is no alternative. Plaid Cymru will show that there is an alternative, that there is nothing inevitable about the outcome of this election. Continued stagnation and gross and ever-deepening inequality is not bound to continue. We can chart a different course, and it's time to believe that that is possible. Mae hi'n braf iawn i fod yma yn llanelli. Dyma lle fydd Plaid Cymru yn troi'r map yn wyrdd <coughs> wrth i Helen Mary Jones gipio'r etholaeth yn ôl i Blaid Cymru. Mae gan Sir Gar a Chymru gyfle i ddechrau o'r newydd ar y pumed o fai. Mae Sir Gar yn esiampl i ni o beth sy'n bosib pan mae pobl yn dweud digon yw digon. Cofion am fuddigoliaeth gwynfor, pymdig mlynedd yn ôl. Y fuddigoliaeth fawr cyntaf i'r mudiad cenedlaethol. Bydd i goliaeth oedd yn holl bwysig i sicrhau datganoli i Gymru. Dechraeodd y chwyldro yn y sir yma, a nawr, eleni, mae angen i ni sbardinor genedl gyfan mewn i chwyldro newydd. Y tro yma i sicrhau llywodraeth gyntaf Plaid Cymru. Mae, mae gan Blaid Cymru dair i chelgais, i greu Cymru iach, i greu Cymru clyfrach, ac i greu Cymru fwy gyfaithog. Ar ôl 17 mlynedd o fethian llafur, <coughs> mae Cymru yn barod am newid. Mae Plaid Cymru yn benderfynol i gryfhau ein gwasanaethau iechyd, i godi safonau yn ein ysgolion, ac i roi hwb i'r economi Gymraeg drwy greu swyddi a chefnogi busnesau. Gyda tîm cryf, gwyledigaeth glir ac uchelgais dros ein gwlad, mae Plaid Cymru yn cynnig y newid sydd a'i angen. Yes, it's good to be back in this fantastic part of our country and I want to take this opportunity to pay tributes to the achievements that have been made in a short space of time by Plaid Cymru-led Carmarthenshire Council. <laughs> Plaid Cymru took control of that council under difficult circumstances last May, and they're in the process of turning the council around, despite those difficulties. Council leader Emlyn Dole has recently announced that almost 3,000 staff on the lowest pay grid are to get a 6.4% pay increase as the council moves towards paying a living wage. It's caused cuts to respite care for disabled children and young people have been rejected and a rural enterprise fund will help people set up new businesses and will also help existing <coughs> firms create new jobs. Economic growth will be promoted by a number of capital investments, an extra £2.4 million in road repairs, a new leisure centre for Llanelli and more investment in flood defences. Labour said it couldn't be done. But within months of them being removed from office, Plaid Cymru is getting on and doing it. Yeah. The Party of Wales rejects the mantra that there is no alternative here in Carmarthenshire and everywhere else. 
We have shown what that alternative looks like, and now we're going to demonstrate that to the entire nation. And what a team of candidates we have here in Carmarthenshire at these elections. The tenacious, multi-talented former MP Adam Price in Carmarthen East and in Evor. The erudite and determined Simon Thomas in Command and West. <laughs> the hard working and compassionate Helen Mary Jones here in Llanelli. <laughs> and with Police Commissioner candidate David Llewellyn, they are a formidable team with a fantastic wealth of experience and expertise between them. All will bring so much, not just to Plaid Cymru's team, but to Welsh politics as a whole. Now everyone knows there's much more to politics than just policy. Politics is about people too. And I have such a talented team of people who all bring different expertise and skills to the table, who together have got what it takes to turn this country around. But before we look to the future, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank some of those who've worked hard over many years for devolution, often unseen and behind the scenes, who will be retiring from the Assembly at this election. Carmarthenshire's very own Rodri Glyn Thomas. Alongside Alan French, Fred Jones and Jocelyn Davis. All three have served their communities with distinction, and all three also served their country as ministers. Wales is a better country today for their endeavours, and on behalf of all of us, I want to say a big thank you for your dedication, for your service to Plaid Cymru and to Wales, Diolf O'Gallo. And for the future, we have an excellent team of strong candidates to follow in your footsteps who are ready to lead for Wales, who are ready to tackle the problems that are facing all of us. So what are those problems? In this nation, the birthplace of the National Health Service, it is a scandal that there are fewer doctors per head than on almost any other country in Europe. The average wait for a hip operation is now 197 days. We have some GP practices turning all but emergency cases away. People lying on the floors of A&E departments waiting for hours to be seen. The conditions that our hard-working frontline NHS staff have to endure because so many of their colleagues have quit in despair is shocking and we want to put that right. This is what Labour celebrates as the halfway point of their decade of delivery. And in this nation, one of the pioneers of mass education, one in four of the poorest children, leave primary school unable to read well. Funding for part-time further education courses under the current Labour government have been slashed by 50%, and there are 90,000 fewer adults in part-time learning than there were 10 years ago. We have fewer engineers per head than any other nation in the UK. You know, the people who make things. Too many of our schools are in a state of disrepair. This nation, the leading light of the last industrial re revolution, now lags behind in terms of wages, GVA, business startups. In fact, by almost every measure, our economic performance is either stagnant or in decline. Our steel industry is in a critical state, yet our current Labour government cannot be bothered to give it life support. 65,000 young people are out of work and jobs in manufacturing sector have been slashed by 21%. That's 40,000 jobs 
lost in Wales since 2001. Mm -hmm. Labour's decade of delivery has been more like decades of decay. But it doesn't have to be like this. People have a choice. Will they give Labour another five years to finish Wales off? Or will people vote to replace them with a team of people who believe in our country, who want to rebuild it and strengthen it? A team who believes in and wants to support our health workers, our teachers, our business leaders, our communities. Will they give the Party of Wales the mandate that we need to lead this nation? If Labour are allowed another five years, and if the current pattern continues, then by the end of this decade, two decades of Labour rule, I'd ask you to consider what the state of our public services and our economy will be. If people in Wales keep, it, keep doing what they've always done with their ballot papers, then Labour will keep on doing what they've always done to our NHS, to our schools and to our industries. I've heard already that what we seek to achieve at this election and beyond cannot be done. Throughout the course of our history, indeed all history, those who seek fundamental change have had their detractors. Some cannot and some do not want to believe that a successful Wales is possible. But I know, and I think most of you out there know too, that this is not as good as it gets for Wales. So many of you understand that our people have been taken for granted for far too long. That you might have given a lifetime of loyalty to one party, but you're now asking what you're getting back in return. And I would call on all of those people who are feeling this way to get behind Plaid Cymru this time. has got what it takes. We believe in our ability to solve our problems for ourselves. Why not get behind a team of people who refuses to accept that we have problems here that cannot be fixed? The Party of Wales knows that another Wales is possible and today we can see the glimmers of those possibilities. Did you know that world-leading geneticists at Swansea University are pioneering efforts to eradicate the Zika virus? Did you know that scientists in Cardiff are playing a crucial role in uh, physics, in discovery, in the biggest discovery in physics in over a century, the long-awaited gravity waves breakthrough? Did you know that this country's creative industry sector is worth a billion pounds a year to our economy and employs nearly 30,000 people? and that Wales has a world-leading manufacturing sector in automotives and aerospace. We have unrivaled potential in green energy. And let's not forget our amazing athletes, our rugby players, cyclists, swimmers, gymnasts, and of course, our national football team, who will take their place among Europe's <coughs> finest this summer. Wales isn't a country on its knees. It's a nation being held back by an underperforming government. <laughs> but I would ask people in this forthcoming election not just to judge Labour's domestic record. Consider too how we can make our feelings known to the Tories in Westminster. We should be angry at our government's impotence to stand up for the interests of our people against the damaging policies foisted on us by the Tory government in Westminster. Just compare the situation in Wales to that of Scotland.
the Scottish Government has managed to secure a financial deal that protects people in that country. The Welsh Government couldn't even secure for Wales a devolution settlement that would give us parity with London, let alone parity with other devolved nations. The Northern Ireland Executive has secured devolution of corporation tax and hundreds of millions of pounds in extra funding. Where is the fight from our government? The Labour Welsh Government hasn't won a single extra penny for Wales or a single significant <laughs> additional economic lever. In fact, they've spent their time accusing Plaid Cymru of demanding too much funding for Wales. <laughs> Other governments stand up for their people. Other governments win concessions for their countries. Our government has surrendered. While Scotland, Northern Ireland, London and even Manchester are to be in, in control of policing, for example, where is the determination to get hold of policing powers from our government? The First Minister can't even win backing on the simple matters. He's failed to win around his own colleagues, his own colleagues in London, to pressurise the UK government into postponing the EU referendum. If he can't persuade his own colleagues in London, then how on earth is he going to persuade the Conservatives? <laughs> Through their insistence on holding the EU referendum in June, the UK government is denying the right to all devolved nations to a full and uninhibited national election campaign. There's no doubt in my mind that it is in our country's short, medium and long-term interests to remain a part of the European Union. Yes, we want a full voice. Yes, there are aspects of that union that we would want to put right. And yes, its democratic structures can be improved. But without a doubt, the EU is an organisation that has facilitated the longest unbroken period of peace on this continent in history. <laughs> it is through cooperation between the countries of Europe that all are best placed to overcome the major issues that do not stop at national borders rights, climate change, conflict resolution, terror, trade, migration. None of these issues will go away by pulling out of the EU. They are challenges that can best be confronted together as Europeans, rather than in conflict or in competition as individual nations. Plaid Cymru wants the EU to work better for its citizens. But the EU, as a model of international cooperation, serves Wales far better than the UK model of a centralised multinational superstate. And I say to people in Wales, given the overlap between the Assembly campaign and the EU referendum campaign, and the risk that the debate that we need to have will get drowned out here in Wales, <coughs> separate the two campaigns. In May, vote for the future of our NHS. In May, vote for Wales. In June, think about Europe. It suits the Tories and Labour to both present May's election as a choice between those two parties and those two alone. But that is no choice at all. We know where 17 years of one party has got us. But people deserve to know what the Tories would do to our country if they ever got the chance. Their leader wants to withdraw billions in EU financial support for Welsh farmers by backing the Leave campaign. If he gets his way, he'd destroy rural Wales overnight, ending centuries of rural heritage. <coughs> we cannot allow the Tories to destroy our rural communities. <laughs> Plaid 
Cymru wants to broaden the prospects for all of our young people. We must give people from all backgrounds the chance to fulfil their potential so that they can all, every single one of them, get the most out of life. It'll be so much harder for the non-privileged if the Tories get their way. And just look at the disdain they've shown to our country. They've sought back to roll back the years on devolution. Even some Tory MPs want the fiasco of the current draft Wales bill to end, and they've got their way now that there's a pause in the entire process. The Tories have always struggled to accept Welsh nationhood. In government, they have taken every opportunity to suppress the growth of our nation and its institutions. But the greatest danger they pose, without doubt, is to our National Health Service. Wales cannot afford for the Welsh NHS to have its strings pulled by Jeremy Hunt in Whitehall through a Tory Welsh Health Minister. long-term implications of that spell disaster. Now, I don't want to see junior doctors treated as badly here as they were in England. We cannot afford to allow the Tories to privatise the Welsh NHS through the back door as they are doing in England. There have been billions of pounds worth of private NHS contracts awarded in England since just 2013, and billions more are expected in the coming months. It would be near impossible to reverse the privatisation <coughs> of the Welsh NHS, and that is why we can never allow there to be a Tory Welsh Health Minister. <laughs> when it comes to the Welsh NHS, let people be in no doubt. While Labour run it down, the Tories want to sell it off, while Plaid Cymru has a vision and a programme to create Wales that is well, well educated and wealthier. And our team has the energy and the dedication to make it happen. We have a comprehensive and deliverable programme of ideas that will build our country, the institutions and the infrastructure that well-functioning economies must have. My team has gone out to so many communities and we've listened to what people have to say. We've listened to their concerns and we've sought to find solutions. Our programme is designed to tackle what people tell us are their main problems, the state of the economy, our living environment, or the public services upon which we all depend. Plaid Cymru's solutions will enable us to leverage our small country advantage. It's a package of measures which together as a whole take advantage of our size, big enough to scale beyond the local, but small enough to be manageable. Plaid Cymru's policies are laid out in three ambitions with three steps within each of those ambitions. Our first priority is the nation's health. Our ambition is to see a Wales that is well, with a free, universal health service run for people, not for profit, kept in public hands for the public good. While many of you have told us about your positive experiences of the health service, and in particular you have praised the NHS staff, many NHS workers have told us how they are overworked and how so many of their colleagues are leaving the service altogether. We can't carry on like this. You told us about other problems with the health service, that if you're expected, suspected of having cancer, you shouldn't have to wait so long. Plaid Cymru's cancer contract will prevent cancer, support those with a diagnosis, end the postcode lottery for new drugs and treatments, and we will cut diagnostic waiting times so that no one has to wait longer than 28 days for a diagnosis <coughs> or the all clear. Three new 
cancer diagnostic centres will be built to deliver on this pledge and one of those will be built in the north. You told us that you are waiting too long for an appointment with a GP, queuing for hours at A&E or waiting on a long list for an operation because of staff shortages is, is not just frustrating but in some cases can be painful. I've dealt with a harrowing case this week, for example, an army veteran with post-traumatic stress disorder who took his own life while waiting to be seen by mental health professionals. We've heeded the warnings made by those on the front line. Plaid Cymru will invest in the health workforce and we will bring down waiting times by training and recruiting an extra thousand doctors and five thousand nurses. And you've told us that it's not fair that older people who need care or those who develop dementia have to pay for their care. So Plaid Cymru will end the artificial divide between health and social care and we will provide free care for older people starting by abolishing charges for home care and for people with dementia within the next five years. And we will pay for these commitments by ring-fencing the Welsh health budget, prioritising health, and we will make sure that the promised new money that comes to Wales for health will be spent in its entirety on health and social care. Our three-point plan for a well Wales is designed to end the unacceptable situation where avoidable death rates are about 15% higher in Wales than in neighbouring countries. My grandmother never tired of telling me stories as a child about how hard life was for her generation growing up during the 1930s. She was sent off to London to work in service at the age of just 14 so that money could be sent back home. That generation endured great hardships and they made big sacrifices. And in return, they were promised that they would be cared for from the cradle to the grave. As well as honouring that promise to them in health, Applied Cymru Government will also ensure that today's generation of children are given the best start in life. Applied Cymru Government will not let our young people down. Our three steps forward for education will make sure all of our young people are catered for, from the cradle through to their career. Every parent without exception will say that they want the, the best start for their child. And the hope from every generation is that the next one is better than the last. Plaid Cymru will introduce a national cradle to career education system within which our young people <coughs> will thrive. You told us that you know of many parents who want to work but are struggling to make ends meet because of the high cost of childcare. We will invest in early years education, beginning the process of creating a national childcare service, delivering free full-time places for all three-year-olds by the end of the next assembly term. You told us that you want teachers to spend more time in the classroom rather than being tied down with paperwork. To cut bureaucracy, we will work with the teachers and create a world-class profession by rewarding the highest skilled teachers and teaching assistants with a pay rise. You told us that you want to see our young people have the very best opportunities to thrive and work here in Wales to boost our economy. So we will fund our universities properly and we'll encourage graduates to come back home and contribute to our economic renewal by writing off up to £18,000 of their student debts. And to complete this circle, Plaid Cymru will guarantee a job or a training place for all under 25s <coughs> and to fulfil that we will create 50,000 new apprenticeship places. Wales's success politically, socially and in terms of improving our public services 
hinges on turning around our <coughs> economic fortunes. Plaid Cymru's ambition is to create a wealthier Wales, and this means closing the gap between this country and our neighbours. Among my first acts as First Minister in May would be to initiate talks with the UK Government to address the chronic and deep-rooted divide in economic prosperity between Wales and the rest of the UK. However, the full achievement of parity will require further economic powers. We will therefore initiate emergency talks with the UK Government to address the chronic and deep-rooted divide in economic prosperity between Wales and the rest of the UK. We'll seek agreement on the establishment of an independent commission on economic equalisation to make sure that Wales has the powers and the resources that we need to close that prosperity gap within a generation. Our long-term plan will consist of three dimensions, raising skill levels, an active industrial strategy and a comprehensive plan for infrastructure investment. The Party of Wales is determined to get this country back on its feet. You told us that you wanted to see transport links improved. So we will undertake the biggest investment in transport, green energy and digital infrastructure through the establishment of a new National Infrastructure Commission. You told us that not enough is being done to tell the world about some of our great products and the fantastic features that we have as a business destination and that so much more could be done to promote our reputation as an exporting nation. So we are going to establish a WDA for the 21st century which will find new opportunities for Welsh exports and promote Welsh businesses and Wales as a business destination. And you told us that you're fed up with people here having lower wages and lower prosperity than people elsewhere in the UK. That is why we will boost the income of small firms by cutting business rates and we'll make sure that when public contracts are awarded, more of that work is given to firms that are in Wales in order to lock that Welsh pound much more into our communities. Plaid Cymru's economic principles are based on decentralism and equality. Opportunities for well-paid work must be available <coughs> across the nation, not just concentrated in one corner. We all know that trickle-down doesn't work. No one believes that money spent in one area will provide benefits to people somewhere else. Sustainable economic development would not result in the entire borrowing capacity of a government sp spent in one small corner of Wales as is being proposed with the new M4 by the current government. Plaid Cymru wants to ensure that all parts of Wales see investment in their communities. So our package of measures focusing on building a well Wales, a well-educated Wales and a wealthier Wales will improve day-to-day -day, day -day lives of our citizens and allow our country and everyone in it to realise their full potential. Conference. It's been 480 years since the first Act of Union. 480 years on, and it's no longer legal constraints that hold our nation back. Wales is held back today by the two establishment parties who both have an interest in maintaining the status quo. I've said many times that there is nothing inevitable about this country and I sincerely believe that to be true. As one eminent economist once said, in Wales one thing is certain, her poverty stems from conviction, not from fact. <laughs> it's political, 
not economic in origin. It's a poverty of structure in the midst of plentiful resources. <clears throat> Friends, we have just 62 days to undo nearly 500 years of false conviction. 62 days to liberate each other from a mindset that says our country's fate is sealed. 62 days to secure five years of applied Cymru government that will deliver the change Wales needs.